welcome to the hen house, Sheldon. <laughs> the hen house. Wow. That, I like that. I mean, that. when she, when Sylvia first said that, I was like the hen house. Like I didn't, I didn't realize where that was going. And I was actually kind of surprised that it went to like, it, she didn't just go directly to, you know, making the rooster cock hen jokes or something. You know what I mean? Like I thought that was the obvious, but maybe because it's MTV, they were kind of, you know, someone behind the scenes was like, okay, that's a little too far. <laughs> Uh, I don't think so. This is not a show known for its subtlety. Um, True. Let's right, do- Amanda? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's do some introductions. I am John Chidley Hill. And I am Sheldon Alexander. And this is You Killed It, the podcast about the challenge. Um, let's talk about... Let's start... At the beginning, shall we? Let's talk about... Can I ask you something overall before we get really get into it? Yes, of course. Always. Did you like this episode? Was it better? Is it? Is, did you like this episode? I did like this episode. Okay. Um, although, no, that's all. That's all. Although, again, we did not have an elimination. True. I true, did like true, this true. episode, though. There was competition. I, I feel yes. like the plot moved forward a teensy bit. Yes, and I'm good with the when there's drama that deals with the game, yeah, more so than the drama that's just about the relationships. And I know those things are are tied together, but I liked how the the drama was, you know, how that relationship shit filtered into the voting. But anyways, we'll get to that, of course. Yes, I will say um, the homie Lawrence Thomas had okay. a tweet. Yes, yes, yes. Where he said uh, that at this rate, the show is going to be going until Christmas, and LT <laughs> is not wrong. It's pretty crazy. This is pretty crazy. So, in the Redemption House, we have CT creating what I said I wanted to make a few weeks ago, a flow mm-hmm. chart of the alliances in the house. And I yes. love that he's doing it a beautiful mind style. Like having the strings between the, between the different like, I wonder if he regularly goes to that length or like what in like is this what he does, when he's in the CT cave back in Florida, like where <laughs> did this idea come from? Uh, did you try to make sense of what he was doing or no? I mean, I mean in terms of like freeze framing it and being like okay uh this person's connected to this person who's connected to this person no that would have been smart (laughs) i should have done that did you do that no 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 i mean it's not even that i i just think that it was more because i can't figure out where what anyone is really doing in this house because it's really confusing and there's so many things to keep in mind and i don't want to jump too far ahead but the whole there's not supposed to be burn votes, but it seems like everyone's trying to use burn votes, yeah. which makes no sense. Yeah, it just no one makes wants it even to go more in. complicated. There's so much going on, so yeah, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. Um, yeah, I just had to point that out. I liked, I liked the visual of CT basically trying to solve a high level, like calculus algorithm equation. The, the funny thing about it, too, about that board is no matter what, and I know that obviously there's so many different cop shows or spy thrillers or whatever in which we've seen a board like that in mainstream television. But for me, I will always think of The Wire. When I see that board, I will always think of The Wire. That's just me, though. Yeah, no, that works. But like it, it's a trope that's in like The Sopranos. Yes. And episodes of Castle, like it's a classic. Castle, wow! Do you do you watch Castle? Oh yeah, you don't. Are you being? I can't tell if you're being serious. I'm dead that. serious. Two, first of all, two Canadians. Second hey, of all, not, it's I, highly entertaining. I'm not knocking the Canadian industry. Shout out to the Canadian television industry. <laughs> um, I just didn't know. You might be the first person I've heard that watches Castle. Not you, to say that it's not highly rated because it's it gets ratings. Like, I get the ratings every day. It gets ratings. But I'm just saying I don't know any of said people who do watch the show. You Until should, now. You should give it a go. It's uh, It's got a lot of charm. It's a fun show. 
Okay. I'd That's say fair. I've seen it. That's fair. I've seen every episode of the first three seasons. Maybe if I find room on my PBR, but I have to get rid of uh, Very Cavallari first because that's uh, <laughs> taking up a lot of my time. That's fair. <laughs> I'm uh, actually not joking either. Shout I know out to you're Jay not. Cutler. I know. I a hundred percent know that you're not. Oh, that so you're not good. Kidding. Um, so good. Speaking back of back to the challenge, though. <laughs> speaking of redemptions. We oh. have Brad and Brittany on the phone. We, we see the end of this conversation. And I, yeah. have, I have two <laughs> notes from this. Oh, ooh, three notes from this conversation. The first is that when you and I discussed this last week, we mm-hmm. said that we were confident that Brittany and Chuck, that there's no funny business there, right? Yes. This phone call made me feel less good about it. The funny thing is, right, this is what I I ended up thinking that I still don't think anything happened, but I feel that what tends to happen in these situations is Brittany is worried about how something might get edited or taken out yeah. of context. So she's already just backpedaling and playing defense, right? So she doesn't want to say anything too crazy or, you know, she doesn't want to omit anything because she knows whatever it is could be taken out of context and blown out of proportion. So I think that in her head throws her off because it was a weird conversation, right? Like yeah. Brad says, Polly starts, Polly says you were fucking around with your ex and Brittany right away. She just says, well, I was wearing my underwear in the yard and shit like once. Mm-hmm. And like, that's your response. Do you know what I mean? It was like, I was going to say it, it was concerning that she wasn't angry. Because Brittany is not someone Ooh, who controls her anger. And, yeah. like, and again, it was a five minute conversation. We saw like 30 seconds. Mm-hmm. So, like, there's definitely editing. But, like, so I, do you think something happened? I, I now wonder. Oh, just, okay. Just okay. because, or maybe she feels guilty or. I don't know. Just I feel. See, I think I feel she might. Less if, good. See, at most, I might think that she feels guilty because deep down she does have feelings for him still, right? Mm. Which is something we talked about before, and maybe that's what we're seeing. Like deep down, she feels guilty, not because something actually happened, but maybe in her mind, she was like, "Uh oh, there's part of me that still kind of likes this guy, or at least has some." Well. Not at least. She definitely has unresolved issues with the guy, right? Like, yeah. they it both acknowledge that. So maybe that's what has her fe- feeling guilty, you know, the, the emotional cheat. Mm. I just, I can't believe that we didn't get a, like, that fucking Polly or, like, fuck Joe, you know, yeah. like, how did she bullshit. not get it? Of yeah. course, it didn't happen. Um, the other note I had was that when he was, Brad was sort of breaking down the conversation for apparently like the council of elders and the the, entire house yeah there's so (laughs) many people there i really got the sense that no one really believes Brittany. like every looking at everyone's faces in that room no one was like yeah brad you're being ridiculous everyone was like very grave in particular zach like could not even make eye contact with him (laughs) well here's the thing again right it's not like you know people are like well what did she say and you're expecting there's going to be some heavy denial right and i know we ended last week where i made the terrible trump joke right yeah this is where this is where this comes in again because and i'm not even making a joke i'm going to be very serious here right but when someone's like, yo, are you a racist or are there tapes of you using the N-word? The obvious answer is no, <laughs> that yeah. does not exist. But when there's wavering, you're kind of like, hold on a second here. So in this situation, and obviously I'm not comparing the two things. I'm not comparing them as if it's the same thing, obviously. Mm-hmm. But my point, though, is when someone asks, hey, so what did she say? And the response is, well, she was walking around in her underwear to get coffee. And like the first thing wasn't, no, obviously not. That's stupid. That's ridiculous. The insinuation of that is dumb, right? Like the first mm-hmm. answer is, well, I just woke up in my panties and walked around a bit to grab a coffee. Or I was in the yard in my underwear once, but like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's the answer. And that makes it seem 
fishy, regardless of whatever the truth is or not, right? Yeah. You're leaving that room for interpretation or at least the room to be like, wait a second, what did you just say? <laughs> right? The the other thing is, like I said, watching Zach's face is interesting. Cause he, <laughs> well, I think he just gives zero fucks, right? Well, but here's the thing. He looks really uncomfortable with the situation and, like I said, can't really make eye contact. And it's important to remember, he knows someone very well who is in the Redemption House. For sure. Who would give him the straight facts. Mm-hmm. And, like, it's also possible that Zach gives zero fucks, because that's kind of how he is in life. Yeah. But it's still, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's just interesting to me, because... It, Outside Davon and Jose, Zach probably has the best idea of what went on in the Redemption House. Right? Because presumably, now that Jenna is also gone, presumably he also had a five minute conversation with Jenna. Maybe. Maybe. Right? Just saying. It's interesting. Just connecting dots. Either way. Either way, I mean, it was funny to see Kyle kind of stand up, and he does make a good point you know like in a weird Kyle way but he does make a good point to the entire audience that's there listening to this whole spiel by Brad in terms of what his conversation was with Brittany but Kyle stands up and he says hey everyone the the key part to remember here is this is all about Polly so remember when he comes back into the house this is the shady shit that he's been trying to do so when he's back in the game you know or if he comes back in the game rather remember this dude is shady. This is the fucked up shit he's trying to do in terms of getting in people's heads and quote unquote playing the game. Yeah. So he's right. I thought that I was really a smart that. thing to acknowledge, right? I really like that a lot. Yeah. I, I also yeah. liked what Kyle had to say in the confessional where he was like, I feel for Brad. Like, yeah, he's my mm-hmm. vendetta, but like, this is not cool. And nor do I want to see him upset. And he's trying to better his life for his kids. Like, this is this is not a, a good situation. It's not a fair situation to Brad. Which is, which is basically what I think the consensus has been amongst fans. Yeah. No, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. I do have a question for you, though. And not to bring up very cavalry again, but <laughs> I'm going to. And the reason being, though, is because Brad, like, it's interesting, right? So on that show, and I understand that Jay Cutler and Kristen Cavallari are in different tax brackets, let's say, than Brad, right? Yeah. But on their reality show, they talk about their kids, but they never show their kids, mm-hmm. right? And early on in the in the thing, they make a, like, they'll talk about, oh, Jay's taking the kids to school or whatever, but they never show their kids. And very early on in the show... Kristen says oh it's because we don't want to put our kids on social media and put our kids on TV and we know like we want them to just like grow up as normal kids for as long as they possibly can blah 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 I say that because obviously Brad brings up his kids a lot but also there's like pictures of his kids on like they showed a picture of him and his kids right like Mm -hmm. what do you think of that move especially in this instance where you know he's bringing up a lot of different things that You probably wouldn't want, like, if that's my dad, I don't want my dad bringing up on TV. You know what I mean? And now, like, I'm a little kid and that stuff's out there. That stuff's on the internet. That stuff's, you know what I mean? Like, it's just a weird, like, is it as weird to you as it is to me? Just Uh, how much, but how intense it is, him bringing up his kids? It is weird to me. It is a bit much, but, like, I think this is a man who's life is in flux right now for a bunch of reasons and he's probably still i mean i don't think he's freaking out as much as he did last season but Mm -hmm. i do think that he's trying to use them as a like grounding focal point and i think that's kind of fucked up yeah right like i mean but it's, it's sort of any port in a storm right not not to excuse it but like i think that he's He's put himself under a lot of stress, both personally and professionally. And so he's like trying to keep a clear mind and it's sort of become his mantra, like much like we saw Tony do, like Yeah. Doing it for my kids, doing it for my kids, doing it for my kids. Yeah. 
I mean, I'll say this, right? I hope and who knows, because again, we're talking about this as two people on their couches watching a reality show. So I don't know these people, right? But I'll say this, and I hope that the intention behind it is more so, oh, this is reality TV and this is what's really going on in my life, as opposed to I'm trying to use this as like a ploy to get more airtime and have a storyline. And you know what I mean? The manipulative, not even game wise, but also like TV wise, fame wise, right? Well, we're, we're going to come back to this. I have more feelings about this at the end okay. of the episode. But also, I have to say, right now, I'm actually in bed. Sup, ladies? <laughs> what is happening? Okay, sure. Well, you Details said that we're on I our did couches. not need to know, but all right. Whatever. Fair enough. I'm Details secure. I did not need to know, but okay, sure, <laughs> sure. Speaking of being in beds, though, right? Uh, see, I the... set that up. Give me a little credit. Go on. <laughs> Uh, Sylvia starts describing the room situation, Mm -hmm. right? And we start seeing the couples, and it's essentially Amanda and Joss, Faith and Kyle, Nelson and Kaylee, right? And one thing, there's two things that stood out to me the most, that, that impressed me the most. The first thing is a creativity of which, you know, normally there's nowhere to hide, even in the bedrooms, right? The way that They set up the cameras, they set up the beds. There's normally no way that whatever you're doing in your bed is hidden from a camera. Yeah. This season though, the way that the bunk beds are situated, they got very creative in terms of hanging up towels, hanging up sheets that you can pretty much, you know, make a solid fort (laughs) for lack of a better term to close the walls off and and you know get it in let's say and the the weird i was impressed in in the creativity to not have just like you know one corner of the room that's hidden but essentially there's three different people in that room getting it on wow did i just say getting it on yes you did it's it's because i'm talking and trying to like censor myself for some reason because i just don't want to say like there's three people in the room smashing (laughs) <laughs> uh, I wrote down in my notes that they are smanging, which is smashing Shmanging? plus banging. <laughs> That's amazing. There, there's well, a there's song called Smang s- It. If if you'd like later as homework, you could listen to the song Smang It. <laughs> That's amazing. So, yes, I'm impressed with their, uh, let's say, set design, <laughs> right? How creative the castmates have become in terms of uh, uh, setting up their their bed and sleeping situation. So, but also, I was impressed with the forward nature of Amanda. <laughs> yes, the forward nature of Amanda. Me too. I, I'll let you decide which way you want to go here on that. Well, first of all, we've never... I don't believe... I don't think we've ever... Not, either when the microphones are rolling or not, I don't think we've ever talked about my second favorite reality TV show, which squares in right behind the challenge, which is a okay. show called 60 Days In. No. The, I have no idea what that is. Well, it's an A&E docu-series um, okay. where they take seven to nine volunteers... Who are civilians who go into a, a United States prison undercover? Whoa! Uh, and okay. the idea is that they are supposed to gather information for the uh, prison wardens to improve conditions in the prisons. One is wow. Jeffersonville in Indiana. The other is uh, in Fulton County in Atlanta. It is fantastic because it's just like. Being an undercover civilian in jail is, as you can imagine, rather tense. Okay, okay. But I'll tell you, one of the things that I have learned is what our friends in the hen house were doing is called tenting, and it is a common uh, technique in prison if uh, if you are hooking up with a cellmate especially in the women's prison because in women's jails they're usually eight per cell and relationships develop and the way they get a little privacy is by creating those tents so Ah, all i'm all i'm saying is that someone in the hen house has gone to jail or watched 60 days in 
the uh, the thing or that struck they're me they're just quite familiar with hooking up with other people in the same room. I don't know which of those alternatives is worse. Um, well, I think they're <laughs> well. Yeah, wow. Yeah, I think they're they're veterans of <laughs> of uh, hooking up on television. Yeah, that's if fair. If you think about the X on the beach people. And, and all, are right? you the one? Yeah. Um, I do have to add one other note. So we, we need to break down the timeline of the hen house scene. <laughs> because yes. Kyle says to Kyle, who's with Faith, says to Nelson, who's with Kaylee, Nelson, is that you? Are we all fucking right now? Mm-hmm. Then Amanda says, let me see that dick. Yep. And then they put up, this is perhaps the best editing move of the series, two minutes later. No, it was ten minutes later. They what? wrote down ten minutes later, yeah. I thought they I'm said pretty two. pretty sure they wrote down ten minutes Because I wrote two minutes, all caps, And then they had the cut where, like, Kaylee and uh, uh, Faith were like, well, at least they're done fast so we can go to sleep. (laughs) So if... I mean... I mean, it depends. If we're talking two minutes versus ten minutes, that's a a key eight minutes. That's like the Nixon tapes. You're right. It's two minutes (laughs) later. You're right. It's two minutes later. Yeah. Like... You are totally correct. It's two minutes later. Good... Good Um, God, Kyle and Nelson. (laughs) And, like, in fairness to Joss... Yeah. We can assume that things have not started yet. Since... (laughs) Since Amanda asked to see his dick. Like, they had not progressed to that stage. Oh. See, I, I wasn't going there. I was going to say that definitely like solid producering, right? Just because I feel like the thing to remember, too, is obviously if it's two minutes later, they're, you're also not showing them. Like the chances of them all being done at the same time is a bit like, come on, like that's not realistic, right? But I will say mad props to the production crew because that's just funny. Like that's just great editing. That's just great storytelling. That's just great hitting the punchline to finish off a, a a segment of the show, right? And and Kaylee, you know, the boys aren't lasting long, so it's great. So it's only it's over in a few seconds, you know? Mm-hmm. They can go to sleep. Got to rest up for that challenge day the next day, right? Yep. I thought it was funny. I, I thought it was a funny scene, and I, I feel bad for Sylvia, I think- right? Like, if you're – why don't they, like, switch rooms? Right, like, wouldn't you switch rooms and go into another room and sleep? Oh, I guess if that was the situation. I mean, with Kyle, obviously, part of the situation is he's trying to keep it on the DL from Kara. True. Um. But yeah, I don't know. You ask a good question. It, I thought Sylvia was the perfect narrator here too. I thought she was hilarious. Yeah, it was. It was funny. I thought it was really good, and it it kind of led right to. Well, I mean, we have a quick scene of Zach and Tori discussing burn votes and who's going to use a burn vote on who and the, how they shouldn't try to waste burn votes on each other. And it's kind of setting up where the story's going. But then we get into some more house drama where this little game of Never Have I Ever, which for the record, Never Have I Ever played the game Never Have I Ever, but maybe that's just me. I don't know. I'm always too um, drunk to understand the premise. By the time it gets around to that point. (laughs) But they get to this whole thing. And obviously this game and their drinking and there's people who know exactly what they're doing in terms of giving the people as in the viewers and the producers what they want. Right. Mm -hmm. And so one of the questions becomes never have I ever had sex in the challenge house. And they start playing the game and then everything switches and, you know, we find out that, you know, there's a bit of a discrepancy in the answers between Faith and Kyle. So then the house erupts, right? Everyone playing the game's like, oh, crazy bench reacts. Everyone goes crazy, like, oh, it's confirmed. They had sex. Ah, everyone's going crazy. Everyone turns into like a 14 year old high school party, right? Mm-hmm. Then to make it even worse, Shane, 
runs off to go tell Kara, hey, guess what everyone was just freaking out about? Yeah. And this is where I'm like, okay, I get it, what's happening. I find it funny. I'm enjoying it as well. But this is where it takes a turn and I start wondering, like, this can't be real, right? Because, like, Kara starts getting all in her feelings. She starts getting all upset, which doesn't make sense to me, again. Like, did it make sense to you? Yeah, I get it. Is she's mad? Why Why is she mad? I don't understand. Why, why is she mad? I, I don't think she's so much mad. I think she's just hurt. Because she still has feelings for Kyle. And she feels disrespected yes. that he's rubbing it in her face and hooking up with someone else under the same roof. Which Wait, is dumb on. because she was doing the same thing with Polly. It's all very stupid, but I understand it. You know, I try to pass down wisdom from time to time in case there's any young bucks listening to this podcast, you know, and every once in a while I try to give some advice. And when I was a when I was a youngster, you know, one of the things amongst me and my guy friends that we would discuss all the time when talking about our relationships with women or with girls would be remember how you got it. Okay? That is one of the most key pieces of advice I've ever heard in my life. Remember how you got it. Meaning, Kara, you're talking about a dude that you met yourself on the reality show, right? Mm -hmm. You're talking about a dude that makes a living off of having sex on reality shows. So how did you get in? Well, the exact same way that Faith is getting in right now. So you can't be surprised. You can't be shocked. You can't be mad. Why shouldn't you be mad? Because you need to remember how you got in. And once you do that, everything else just seems to make sense. And that's why to me, I'm like, you can't really be that mad. And then now you're the one thing I give her, she's telling Faith, you know, that she's not mad at Faith and she gets it. But I didn't like how she then tried to turn it into, oh, well, if I was a rookie, yeah. I don't know if, that, if I'd come into the house and and get with someone who's been with someone else in the house. No, the the rookie that wasn't cool. situation to me doesn't shouldn't enter into the equation. It's enough to say. Mind you, it did lead to one of the best confessionals that yes. we've had all season that Faith gave us rookie or not however you want to label her that confessional where she comes in and she pauses right she says hold up i'm a veteran i'm a veteran and you know i'm if you really want to be serious about it i'm the only real veteran here because i actually serve for my country mm -hmm. so y'all are actually the rookies so all that rookie talk is just farts in the wind i thought that was the funniest confessional i've seen in a long time and factually correct as well yeah, um, absolutely factually correct. And like you said, I agree with everything you just said. That Kara, I like that she said, like, I'm not mad at you, Faith. You're single, you're doing your thing, but I'm hurt. Like, this is a shitty situation, and I hope you understand that it is a shitty situation for me. I think that's fair. I disagreed with her bringing up the rookie veteran dynamic because I don't think it matters. It's not relevant. germane. Yeah, it's not relevant. Um but I mean, oh God, we're gonna we're gonna come back to Kyle and Kara Maria again later in the episode. I yeah. d I do think that not for this episode of You Killed It, but for perhaps the next episode of You Killed It, we bring back the two minute clock for Kara Maria and Kyle, just as we had them Agreed. for Nelson and Kaylee. That was a very popular Definitely. feature uh, of of our Agreed. last episode. Um, so then we've got TJ takes the Redemption House people to the surveillance room and basically is showing them video of people hooking up, which now that I say it out loud is a little weird. Like, I imagine being like, all right, yo, world BMX guy, TJ Lavin's going <laughs> to take you into a hidden room in the house you're living in and show you video of people, you know, hooking up later sounds like its own separate like reality show <laughs> yeah right? like what television is going to be in 2025 you mean right? on like, the porn hub be, channel yeah it's like ridiculousness but like the porn version of ridiculousness yeah it's coming right? as our morals um, continue to decay it's coming it's coming i thought you were making like a play on words there 
like the pun was intended there uh. anyways uh haha anyways though the weird thing that i found about that scene was how come they only showed kyle and faith and angela bananas why didn't they show kaylee and nelson or and maybe they did but for editing purposes they left that part out but it seemed weird that you know they just keep trying to put the target on faith and angela so much and that seems to be the storyline which you know i i get why it's happening and i understand why it's happening but it seemed kind of weird that that would be the only thing that you would show the redemption house maybe because they're sick of nelson and kaylee too Ah, maybe, maybe, maybe. I don't know. Maybe, you make maybe. a good point. Um, I did. Uh, I did pause for a second when Natalie looked upset about <laughs> Angela and bananas, and I was like, "Wait, I thought you were over this." But you know what? I thought about it, and I think that Natalie's upset isn't that she still has feelings for bananas. I think she now understands how he used her last season. Yes. And CT was very quick to point that out, right? Like, he was very nonchalant in the way that he said, oh, whatever, Angela and Bananas, like, we know what they're doing already. They're both using each other. Yeah. Right? Like, and so for him to say that nonchalantly, that probably, you know, rubs more salt in the wound because she's like, oh, how is this not so obvious that, Yeah. yes, we might have been trying to use each other, but he was obviously using me a lot more than were able to manipulate me more than I was able to get out of our agreement or whatever, however you want to phrase their quote unquote relationship, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean I found that I found that scene kind of weird, but then we got to an actual challenge. This was a good I challenge. That, I thought it was a really good challenge, but you know what I needed more of? And I don't even know how you would have shot it, but I think I needed more of the train. Just like, you know, a wide shot of the train moving. Because I felt like the way that it was shot, it was all like, for the most part, close up. I guess let's explain the challenge first, right? So it's called blowing off steam. And you're on top of an actual train. Like basically the scene that you see in every single action movie, right, that there's ever been, basically, right, where people are running on top of a train. But in this instance, there were two different sections where you and your partner had to make it across. The first part was a beam. Mm -hmm. Right. And then the second part was like a cable wire where kind of like remind me of like a ropes course. Right. Yeah. Where you kind of had to go across that with your partner and pretty straightforward. Right. But super difficult because to me, what did uh, let me ask you first, I guess. What did you think was the most important part of being successful at this challenge? Um, taking your time and okay and having as wide a base as possible especially between you and your partner mm -hmm. um a little fun fact about the chidley hill family is that i come okay. from a long line of train engineers and it's a really? yes yes sir and okay uh my grandfather and most of my great uncles were train engineers and i did not know that so it is a family tradition to take the train from Toronto to Vancouver, which for our usual uh, Canadian facts, that is a very long way. People who do not know yeah. Canada well, that is 4,500 kilometers. It takes three and a half How days. How long is that trip? Three and a half three days. Three and a half days. So I've done Ooh. it twice. So okay. I've spent a lot of time on trains and... Even as just a passenger, just walking down the hallway on a train, it's hard to maintain your balance. Like you sort of develop, <laughs> seriously, you sort yeah, of develop definitely. sea legs because there's so much yeah, sway. Yeah, yeah. Um, more than you would experience on a subway train or a commuter train, like a go train in the greater Toronto area. On like a proper train like what they have, a lot more yeah. sway. Um, yeah, I feel like this was super hard. And, and so you need to have a wide base. And this is one of the things that surprised me. And it makes me wonder if they showed us the competitors in a in the actual order that they competed. Because Johnny question. Because Johnny Bananas and Tony and Cara Maria and Marie did it right on the beam, where they had one person. All the people that. All the people that made it across did it the correct way. Yeah, where the, if that makes sense. One person went backwards, one person went forwards. 
yes. wide base sort of holding on to each other. Mm-hmm. And I don't understand why they people did that and then people as it was presented to us did it afterwards without trying to do that like maybe it was because the train's moving it was out of sight so they couldn't see how others did it Mm -hmm. but yeah that was a major key to success that's a great question john and to be honest i didn't even really think of it in that sense but that's a that's a great question like maybe they did show it out of state out of order because i was wondering I was wondering in the fact that, you know, you just watched people be successful doing it one way. So why would you go up next and do it a different way? Right. That was the part that didn't make sense to me. But your explanation would take care of that for sure. Um, But to me, the most important part in this challenge was understanding the weight distribution in terms of who's the heavier person. To me, that was a way bigger factor in terms of who was succeeding in this and who was failing in it. And perfect example was when we saw Joss and Sylvia and Amanda and Zach both make it all the way across, right? Yeah. And I think the key to that was they're obviously going in knowing, okay, well, Amanda, not only are is your partner way lighter, but you have the mental understanding if you're Zach or uh, Joss that – okay, well, I got to balance. I got to be kind of the the sturdy one here because I can hold up this other person. Like if I'm not the sturdy one, they can't hold up my weight and we're done. Whereas if you look at a team like Brad and uh, Kyle, whoever's the strongest one, whoever that is, it's not that obvious, right? So mentally, they're both trying to play the game on their own without having – you know, the help or the aid of your partner to balance you out. And I think that's a great advantage or sorry, a disadvantage to have. Whereas Johnny Bananas and Tony, if you notice before they went, Tony did say they discussed it and I'm the bigger one. So I'm going to be the one going backwards first and holding, holding it up type of thing. Right. Yeah. So to me, that was the biggest factor, the weight distribution of it. And pe- the other people, if you notice, you know, Kaylee and uh, Cam, they fell right away. Uh, I mean, I was going to mention Derek and and Tori, but I mean, that was just, yeah. Um, I, I feel bad. I'm starting to feel bad for Derek. I need to quote Derek, though. I'm a very athletic person. <laughs> That's it? That's it. Sure, Derek. <laughs> Whatever you well, say, Derek. I- do you know what's making this worse? Because everything is being pinned on Derek, and I don't know if that's fair. Yeah, I right? don't know if and this I, challenge in particular we can blame Derek. But I just mean in the sense that, you know, just because Tori didn't fuck up yet doesn't mean that Derek is the clear, like, you know, he's the reason why they're not winning challenges. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I feel like. Derek being so bad is just boosting Tori even more without Tori having to do much, especially when they're losing so early, mm-hmm. right? And like just the way that she was gassing it up before they even went, right? She was kind of like, "Oh, every day is a new day where Derek doesn't get get a chance to shit the bed," you know? Yeah. Like, or Derek gets approved <laughs> that he's not going to shit the bed or whatever the hell it was that she said, right? And like, how is that? And she was like. She kept going and even added in like a Jada Kiss ad lib, the aha, right? And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, this dude here is like, you're just savaging him right before he goes up. And so, and you cheated on him on national television. Like, I like Tori, but like, pump the brakes on this guy. (laughs) Like, he's in a tough spot. (laughs) And let's be, let's be honest here, right? It's 2018. Right, we're talking about equality, and so if we are gonna crush CT for blaming Veronica all the time, or if we're gonna crush, you know, whoever for blaming their partner and getting mad at their partner and dissing them, and you know, not taking care of what do we talk about all the time, right? We talk about how it's a physical and a mental challenge, right? Yep, and so you have to physically and mentally help your partner. 
is Tori right before you go to do a challenge saying, oh, today's another day where you might not shit the bed? Like, is that a good way to motivate your partner who's clearly been struggling so far right before you go? No, of course not. No. Right? But she's kind of just getting a pass so far as if we're like, oh, she's one of the best players here. She's so strong. She's a great player. And Derek's just bringing her down. Like, I kind of think it's unfair. It, if Don't you... get me wrong. He's not doing well. But she's getting boosted just off of him not doing well. And if you look at the teams that completed this task, which there's only three of them, right? There is Zach and Amanda, Sylvia and Joss, and Tony and Bananas. Those yeah. three teams don't like each other, but they're functioning, and they're not yes. running each other down. Like, Zach exactly. even says, like, listen, Amanda's not the best physically because she's a very small person, but she's good at other stuff. Yeah. Like, he, he doesn't shit on her. He's just stating facts. He is... But also, too, like, we talked about this early on. The thing with Amanda is you know at least she's going to try at everything. And oh, like, yeah. And I know that, like, we're not handing out participation medals here. But, I mean, when we're doing something... When you're doing a challenge that's, like, super hard or super crazy or super whatever, it helps to have someone that's not scared, right? As yeah. opposed to, you know someone who you got to like talk up every single time. Amanda's like ready to go. She's going to give effort. She might not succeed every time. Heck, Zach might not succeed every time, right? Like Amanda, the last challenge they had, right? Amanda was the one that made it all the way across and, and Zach fell, right? When they're jumping on the stakes or whatever, right? Yep. So to me, it was it was super interesting in that sense, right? I thought that was kind of cool um, to see just – what certain teams figured out and what certain teams didn't figure out. One and, team I want to talk about is Shane and Nelson, who yeah. were so angry with each other before the competition even began. Like, <laughs> yes. they were beefing hard. And they, it's funny because, like, by moments, you could, like, you and I have talked about this, you could see that they would be an effective team. Mm -hmm. But. Nelson, it seems as though Nelson was super mad about Shane's role in stirring the pot with Faith and Kyle and Kyra Maria the night before. And I have to say, I mean, mark the time, I agree with Nelson. Like, if I was Nelson, I'd be like, dude, just chill on the drama. It's so true. Like, Shane is doing too much, man. Like, He's doing too much. We don't need to do anything right now about this drama. Ever like they are the f house focus. Let them be the house focus. Like let's just keep exactly. our hands clean and mind our business and yep. coast while those the three or four teams involved in this drama get taken out. Also too, just trust in the fact that like they have a good team. Yeah. Right? So they, it's not like they have to – they need to like go around manipulating or doing anything crazy. You know what I mean? Like there's there's no need for that. I understand if you, if you thought you had a weak team, then maybe you would have to figure something out in terms of, oh, well, how are we going to go far in this game? Because we can't win challenges. So we really got to politic our way through. They have a good team. Yeah. You could just you know rely on trying to win challenges, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the other uh, note, of there's course... There's a key part that we left out, though. I was just going to say, we, we got to talk about Brad and Kyle, and they're not using the term grenade anymore, but they threw a grenade at Car Maria and Marie. Yes. And this is obviously like a major focal, focal point of the episode and this challenge in particular. But so they had a chance. They were calling it a lifeline. And basically it was one of the ropes that would help you going across the cables, which is a very key <laughs> element of getting across the cables. Because as we mentioned, this is super hard. So as you're going along this essentially a, a wire, right, mm -hmm. on a moving train, there are ropes dangled at certain points. And Kyle and... Kyle and Brad were able to remove one of those things from a team of their choice. And they chose Cara Maria and Marie. What did you think of that choice? Um, I thought it was a bad decision just across the board. Agreed. Because it's totally agree. It's putting on a it's putting gasoline on a fire that you're trying to put out. Mm -hmm. And there is stiffer competition. Uh, no offense to our girl Marie, 
But there are, in a competition like that that's purely physical, there is greater competition to you, Brad and Kyle, right? Like, obviously, like, Kyle joked to Johnny and Tony, like, when they got back in the lineup, like, oh, sorry, boys. Doing it to Johnny and Tony would have made more sense. 1,000%. And, like, 1, I know hindsight is twenty twenty. So we could say, oh, throw it at Zach and Amanda or Joss and Sylvia. But, like, Johnny and Tony is the obvious decision. In the my mind. And I guess Brad and I, Johnny get along. So, like, they, he didn't want to burn that bridge. But, like, they're, they're, I think, were, even if you're not looking at most competitive, do it to Jose and Davon and be like, listen, you guys have already been eliminated once, and so, like, to keep the game simple, we're trying to send you back. Or yeah. or whatever. Like, there, there's other less popular teams and certainly less drama-filled teams that you could have targeted. Definitely. And, and I wonder, there's two sides to it, right? Because I, I feel like your mindset should be I'm using this on someone that I'm trying to get out of the house because they're coming at me. I don't know if necessarily Kara and Marie were coming at Brad and Kyle. No, I don't. You know what I mean? Like I don't think that's a. I don't think like those two teams should be targets for either one, either side, right? Like it makes no sense. So that's the first part of it that was weird. So the only thing that I could think of that would make some little bit of sense is okay, well, she's already mad at me anyways. Why don't I just continue with someone being quote-unquote mad at me instead of getting another team mad at me? Yeah. Right? Even though, like, Kara being mad might not lead to votes because it's all, like, personal stuff is the reason why they're mad, and this is actually gameplay, right? But maybe that was his thinking. I don't know. That's the only thing I could think of in terms of why this would be a good strategy because you're right. If you're Kyle and Brad, you're thinking of, okay, well, what teams don't like me, right? Mm -hmm. What teams do I have beef with, like real beef that could actually affect my game? And I don't think that that's Kara and and Marie at all. No. So I, I thought that was super weird. What adds but, to the confusion for me is then after the competition, which Zach and Amanda won, I can't remember if we mentioned that, is we have yeah, this... Zach and Amanda won. Is that we have the scene where Kyle and Cara Maria are discussing their relationship. And <laughs> Kyle says, and I believe he was genuine, genuine when he says, like, I like you a lot, and it's hard on me that, you know, we film this, and then you go back to America, and, like, I can't do the long-distance thing. So, you know, I like you a lot, and, like, I'm pushing you away just because, like, I can't, I can't deal with this. But I also don't understand, like, if Kyle likes Kara so much, why is he being so shitty? Like, okay, you like Kara, you can't do the distance thing, it's painful seeing her, you didn't handle things right when you went to Thailand for two months and broke off contact, but don't be such an aggressive dick about it. Like, don't hook up with Faith. <laughs> don't throw grenades at her in competition, right? Just, like have that conversation that you had right then off the t off the hop right like as soon as you appreciate that you're in a challenge house with Cara Maria which by the way if it's too hard seeing Cara Maria don't go on the challenge because obviously she's going to be on the challenge right like <laughs> there's so many exit ramps on this highway Kyle is on and he has elected to take none of them yeah. First, I will say you're totally correct about having the two minute convo next week about Kara and Kyle for sure, because like it's so annoying to me, like their whole dynamic is super annoying to me. And what was most annoying in this instance was Kara saying, well, there's a lot of little girls that look up to me as yeah, being like super yeah, no. strong. And so how am I supposed to? And it's like, homegirl, relax, right? Like you're not you're not you're not Maya Moore. You're not like, do you know what I mean? Like, let's, let's slow down here. I'm not saying that, you know, people don't look up to Kara. Yeah. Obviously I'm not a little girl, so I don't know this, but you have to have some, like some self-awareness to know how you're sounding. 
right. right? And like that just sounds like a weird thing to say for someone who's on MTV The Challenge. Also, to extend right? your logic, if she is supposed to be a role model, oh, then should she yes. not be That's where I was going. acting with more composure and not using Polly to make Kyle jealous? Not using a man that's in a relationship. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> like... That would be something as a role model you probably wouldn't want to show to all your young uh, female fans. But, yeah, it just comes off as phony and cheesy. But then the funniest part and the most real part is just the way that they cut it with the music and the pause. And then it, the camera pans over to Marie who comes outside and she's just like, what are you guys doing? Kara, get off right? of his lap. It's so good, Listen. right? And she's she, Marie's right. Like Kara brags about being this like warrior princess type, and it's like, what are you doing now? I I mean, long time listeners know of, of this show of you killed it. No, though we are ride or die for two challenge people in particular, <laughs> Marie and Wes. And I yes. have to say, I think. When Marie suddenly appeared and said, Kara, get off of his lap, and looked just beyond annoyed, I have never yeah. liked Marie more, which is saying a lot. <laughs> but because it was super funny because it was so real. She was like, she was representing at that moment, I bet, what, 80 to 90% of the people watching on TV. And I would say the other percent, like the, if it's 90%, the other 10% were, they just don't care at this point. And they're like, just shut up with this whole storyline. But I bet most of the people watching Marie represented them in terms of being Carl, what the hell are you doing? Like, it makes no sense. Well, none I, at all. Like he just had to bat the googly eyes at you and then boom, sucked right back in and nothing matters. He does have beautiful blue eyes. <laughs> I also I want to I've I've been thinking I watched we're recording Wednesday morning I watched this last night um, mm -hmm. while at work what up um, and <laughs> I think this could be this episode could be a turning point for Car Maria and Marie <clears throat> and the way mm -hmm. the reason why I say that is they showed good teamwork in the competition. They did. And Johnny Bananas and Tony. And Johnny Bananas does not like Car Maria, lest we forget. They both immediately said if it wasn't for having that handhold removed by Brad and Kyle, they would have made it. Yeah. They wouldn't have yeah. won because Tony and Bananas were ahead of them anyway. But that yeah. made the difference. Um, and hey, t Bananas and Tony did say, right, if it wasn't for that. If it wasn't, like, there's no way that they would have been able to do it if they were the ones that received the penalty. Yes. Right? Like, if you remove that first rope from them, like, there's they had no chance at it at all. So, you know, they weren't, like, making fun of Kara and, and Marie for failing on that part of the challenge either. And we're getting to this part, but when it came to voting time, they agreed on who to vote for. Yeah. And although yep. Kara Maria in this scene where she was sitting in Kyle's lap, although she wouldn't like what Marie was saying, she has to recognize that Marie was looking out for her best interests, not as a teammate, yes. but like person to person. Mm -hmm. And they are getting on the same page. Will I'm will, you know, only time will tell if they just had a solid 48 hours where they were getting along, <coughs> but yes, there's good signs. See. There's good promising signs for them as a team. And if they do like start to click, it'd be interesting to see how well they do. Because like Shane yeah. and Nelson, they are a potentially dangerous team if they can just get over their bullshit. Yeah. Good promising signs there. Not good promising signs for Shane. No. Who, Classic as we mentioned Shane. earlier, overplaying his hand, right? So as you mentioned, Zach wins... Zach ends up sitting down and telling Shane, you know, he's having a discussion. And the way that this conversation really came off to me, it almost seemed as if Zach might have been, might have been trying to just throw Shane off, right? Yeah. I, th but I did feel time, like he, he was humoring Shane. Yeah. At the same time, though, he mentions that Amanda is super cool with Shane, 
but he doesn't trust him, right? So maybe there is kind of an alliance to a certain extent with those two. But either way, Zach tells Shane that he wants to put in Davon and Jose. And what does Shane do? Shane runs and tells Davon and Jose, Mm -hmm. (laughs) right? And in his mind, he's thinking, well, if I can pin those two against Angela and Faith and get that drama going up in the house, that takes the pressure off of him and Nelson. My question is, was there any pressure on him and Nelson to begin with anyways? No, I don't think so. I don't think... If you looked at the top four vote getting teams like Mm -hmm. but like if you were like doing the math in your head it would be yes jose and davon it would be yes faith and angela be Mm -hmm. it would be kyle and brad and tori and and derek those are the four teams that were in my mind in the danger zone and, like, you can do the math, right? Like, you can say, okay, Cara Maria and Marie are either voting for Faith and Angela because of the Faith-Kyle situation, or they're going to vote for Kyle and Brad because they had that grenade thrown at them because of the the Cara Maria-Kyle situation. So, like, that's one vote squared away. And then you can just sort of work it out from there. And, like, I'll say this. I think Shane's logic about voting for Faith and Angela makes sense. Like, he is correct. Johnny Bananas is vulnerable this season. Everyone's, you always, like, got to come for the crown. Taking out Johnny Bananas always has to be priority number one. And at this stage, it's easier to take out Faith and Angela because they are, like, a key part of his alliance. Like, they're, Shane's logic, in my mind, is solid. And I think if he just left it there with... um with Zach and just like stated his case and then did nothing mm-hmm. more it would have worked but then yes. when he went to Davon and Jose Jose who he hates like Jose and Shane do not like each other like of yeah, course it's going to come flashback. off insincere well I had the flashback to the reunion show right from Champs versus whatever that was called Champs versus Stars Champs versus Pros I don't remember Champs what versus Stars but either way the like they had a full-on screaming match not yelling match but screaming match in each other's faces finger pointing whatever like face to face just going at it in the middle of the reunion show last time right like these are two people that do not like each other like something obviously happened between the two that we don't know and i think it was alluded to during that same reunion special but either way why would that's the part i didn't understand right like why would he think that Jose and Davon would be interested in anything that he has to say, right? Like, that was the weirdest part to me. So we we kind of get a feel for who voted for who. We kind of do, but not really. And they showed the us some of the votes that are up. locked in. They showed us some of it. Like, enough that there's yeah. doubt. Yes. Enough that, you know, this uh, cliffhanger into next week's episode you know, it has me in. It has me intrigued. But the real drama of it all was the fact that as this happens, well, there's two sides of the drama, right? I guess the first side of the drama was Kyle overhearing Kara say that they voted for their team. Yeah. And so, one, I have no idea how Kyle even heard that. He must right? have Wolverine I- hearing. Like, that was ridiculous. Yeah. I don't know the layout of the house, but it just seemed the way that it looked like editing wise, I was kind of like, oh, okay, where is this situated? How did he hear this? But anyways, they have a huge blow up because now Kyle is mad at Kara for putting him in, which makes zero sense, right? Or am I missing something? Oh, it makes zero sense at all. And like he brings up (laughs) the point, like you're taking $500,000 out of uh brad's hands you know that's money that would be going to his two boys first of all terrible 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 first of all are did brad marry an nba player like why does kyle think they need five hundred thousand dollars for two children (laughs) second of all he's not married to blake griffin no no second of all (laughs) That's just false logic. And Car Maria tweeted about it last night during the episode. 
saying like, okay. I'm sorry, why does it mean that if you have kids, you get a free pass to the final? Like, why do we all Agreed. have to step aside? And I agree with her completely. And I'm sorry if I'm misquoting this, but I'm pretty sure that Car Maria has made it clear via social media that she does not want kids. Like, it's a, a choice she's making. She's not interested in having children. And it makes a okay. fair point. Like, beyond the ridiculous idea that Brad deserves a free pass to the final because he has kids, if she never has kids, which is a totally legitimate choice, and maybe there's people in the house who will never have that choice because they biologically cannot have kids, like, mm -hmm. like they have a fertility issue, the, wh I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why is it? F how fair is that? Yeah, how yeah, fair yeah. is that? And both she and Zach made the point in confessional. Like, hold on, Brad and Kyle. You guys threw this grenade at Car Maria and Marie, and, yep. and you didn't expect any retribution. Like, I don't. I didn't agree with what Kara said to Kyle about like, oh, I, I'm an example to little girls everywhere. But she is right. Like, I can't just be a like a bitch about this like you can't like clown me and then me just like smile yeah. and take it like she's a hundred percent right totally totally right and you're 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 correct too in like they both had arguments that made little to no sense at all right like you know the little girls looking up to you like nobody cares about that car like that makes no sense but in this from the standpoint of you know all you had to say was listen I didn't appreciate the way that I've been feeling in this house. And a lot of that is based off of you and faith and you showing very little respect. We've shown very little respect to each other going back and forth. So why would you be that surprised that I voted for you? Yeah. Right. And, and, and also that would make sense. you can't expect, like you just can't expect Brad and Kyle cannot expect to make an aggressive move and there to not be a reaction. Exactly. Yeah, it may it their outrage was crazy, but this is what it reminded me in a weird way of what happens in Big Brother all the time, right? Because you have to remember Brad and Kyle were winning challenges. They were in charge for the first little bit of the show, and this happens all the time in Big Brother. People who were in charge early get this false sense of security as if like they're running the show and yeah. they believe as if like oh well i was going to be running the game and in, in, in charge from the beginning to the end and i was just going to win and sweep the whole thing and it's like that's never how it works out or how it happens right no but clearly to me brad and kyle had this false sense of security in terms of we're untouchable no one would ever vote for us because they don't want to go in an elimination against us but but and this might be an interesting side do you also think that Kara and Marie make this move because they're throwing away and using a burn vote? Well, follow me for a second, right? Okay. Most people aren't going to vote for Kyle and Brad because they don't want to go in. They don't want the chance of going into an elimination against Kyle and Brad. So if you are using a burn vote, which we noticed people voiced it in different ways, but essentially we saw a bunch of teams saying that they're going to throw away their vote and try to use a burn vote. Do you think that Kara and Marie were doing the exact same thing, just not really saying it? No, I think it was voting with a purpose. Okay. I And, and that, I do want to talk about the burn votes. And, like, you might have a point, like, maybe that entered into their logic, but I do think that they were voting with intention. And, like, part of that is that they were talking about it. Yeah. That they were saying to people, like, no, we voted for Brad and Kyle because fuck those guys. Like, if you're doing a burn vote, you keep it on the DL. They were not keeping it on the DL. They were... But do you see what I mean? That would be, like, crazy strategy. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, and the, and crazy Cara strategy. and, and Marie no are idea. capable of that kind of, like, high-level thinking. Like, they're, mm -hmm. they're smart enough to do something like that. But then again, it'd be undone by them, like, putting it out there. Um, I well, I, I hope this is a case, right? And yeah. I hope that they have it set up for this. And I hope it's a case that all these people using burn votes use their burn votes on the same person, right? Like, I hope that's what happens. Me too. Because I just love that. I would love for that to be the twist, right? Because a burn vote is such a cop out. But in this instance, 
where everyone thinks they're using a burn vote. I think it'd be so funny because there's definitely teams that you would assume, like, why would someone vote for Brad and Kyle? Like, that doesn't make any sense. They've won so many challenges. You don't want to go into an elimination against them. Yeah. Right? So you could see the logic behind it. The, but the, if everyone starts doing that, it's amazing. Yeah. The, so good. I wrote down in my notes, you can't all do burn votes as you're, <laughs> as you're seeing them go through it. And, like, let's define a burn vote here. A burn vote is when you vote and your vote would not make a difference. Right? Like, that's yeah. that's the logic behind it. And typically it happens when, you know, everyone has, like, when they do the traditional style where everyone votes in front of each other. And Yeah, so you can see all the votes and you can see that, hey, this might end up in a tie, but you don't want to be the person to decide the tie so you burn your vote and throw it away to someone else that has no votes for them already you can't burn a vote when you don't know which way the wind is blowing exactly and so all these people might be like oh let's burn our vote let's burn our vote someone's gonna get like fuck around and the wrong team's gonna get nominated guys the other thing too, right, is because it's it's anonymous, right? Like who, well, you're not voting in front of other people. You can lie to the house. Like that's what another factor I think that's going down as well, right? Yeah. There might be people going around saying, oh yeah, I voted for this person, hoping that it never gets revealed, right? Well, Because it only gets revealed for whoever has the most votes, right? Which brings us to our second major uh, fight at the end of the episode. Which yes. is, and I'm just gonna ask you: Are you Team Jose, or, or sorry, yeah, Team Davon, I guess, or Team Shane? I am. I mean, I understand. I understand Shane's annoyance because of anyone, Davon and Jose should be voting for Faith and Angela. I disagree with that, but okay. Um, well, I, well, I'll, t- but I don't know. I'm. My point is I'm not Team Shane. I think what Davon <laughs> and Jose should have done, and the smartest thing to do, is to go to Zach and Amanda and ask, hey guys, who are you voting for? Because they have the most powerful vote, right? Because they've got the double yep. vote, the power vote. If you do that and they and you believe they give you an honest answer, just vote along the same lines. Yeah. I guess that puts you in danger of having to actually go into the elimination competition. Which is what you want to avoid, because that's the other strategy point to this, right? Yeah. The team using the power vote, they might vote for whoever they want to, but you can't just really jump on board because they're not going into the elimination no matter what. No, but you could... Right? So there's some strategy to it. You could um, work with them, right? So we'll use this week as an example. You're Jose and Davon. You go to Zach and Amanda and you go, okay, who are you guys going to vote for? And I mean, Zach and Amanda, we're talking Jose and Davon mm-hmm. since they put them into the redemption test before and that way they make new enemies. Yeah. What you can offer Zach and Amanda as Jose and Davon, you can say, listen, don't vote for us, vote for someone else, and we will vote along with you. That way, that team has three votes, and they're almost guaranteed to go in, right? Like, at that point... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, you still will probably get what you want, where we are put into an elimination, and we can do the dirty work. But the benefit to Jose and Davon is that there is a chance that they're not going in the elimination, right? Right. Yeah, because if someone yep. else votes the way that Zach and Amanda and Jose and Davon are in that hypothetical situation, then the team that is going straight into the elimination has to choose between Jose and Davon and the other team, whoever that might be. Yeah, and so like, no, for sure, it increases your chance of like from definitely going in to maybe going in. And, yeah, and it yeah, builds I, an alliance. And I do think Zach and Amanda are trustworthy. Like, I would trust them more than I trust Shane. Oh, well, I trust anyone more than I trust Shane. 
But I think the the biggest factor, right, of all these people and what they're trying to do is I don't even know if they want to vote for a certain person to get eliminated. I think they just want to make sure that they they don't have a chance of entering the elimination, right? So I feel like that's what we're seeing here, right? It's not about trying to, you know, make sure we get X person out of the house. It's just how long can I avoid eliminations for, right? And how can I do whatever I can to avoid the elimination. I think that's the main strategy that's going on so far, right? Yeah. It's not, whereas in normal years, it's like, let's make sure we get bananas out. Let's make sure we get this person out. Let's make sure we get this person out. It's not necessarily, like that shouldn't necessarily be the focal point of your strategy. Mm -hmm. Maybe it should just be, how do I avoid elimination for as long as possible? And, you know, in this instance, I think Shane's doing a horrible job of that because then he decides to, confront Davon and Jose and it turns into a whole argument because Shane who is a habitual line stepper oh. right <laughs> which he, I like it makes for good TV like I'm entertained by Shane don't get it twisted but as were Tony and Bananas who happen to have the best seats in the house for both of these fights somehow like I don't know where everyone else is in the house but like do does like does production page bananas and let him know when drama is going on because he just happened to be right there front and center for both of these fights, which kind of seemed weird to me, but let's get back to Shane for a second. Right. And this whole thing of calling her a bitch and just throwing that out there. If you listen to this podcast a lot, you know what I say a lot. And a lot of the time it's about there's lines, right? And we understand that we're filming a show we understand that people cross the line at certain points, but there's a there's a limit to that, right? And so for different people, it's going to be different words. Different people have different triggers. And so you're not going to call me a bitch and that's just going to be like how this is going to go down on national TV. You know, like and, – and so I sided with Davon here hard. I understand what she's doing and she's just like, no, no, no. This is not a thing that's going to happen, right? Like mm -hmm. you don't just get – you don't just get to call me a bitch and like, that's it. And we're going to be like, all right, cool. Ha ha ha. Right. Like, no, no, no. That's not how that's going to go down. And Shane just continuing to instigate it and calling her a bitch over and over again. It was just super annoying. Yeah. Like really, really annoying. I don't even know if entertaining is a way to go about it. Cause you know, sometimes the drama is entertaining and like the one camera guy, shout out to the camera guy framing the shot that had, you know, <laughs> Davon and Shane yelling at each other, but in the middle you had Tony sipping the tea. Yep. <laughs> and the, the camera guy just kept adjusting the focus so that, you know, the focus would be on the two people, but then it would switch to Tony as he took a sip. Like, it was so perfect, everything about that, how it was shot. But I'm definitely not on Team Shane. Shane can get out of here, man. I'm, I'm tired of Shane. He's just annoying. He's... Like, this is the role that he plays. But he could actually win challenges if he just shut up. And, and, and this is Nelson's annoyance, right? Like, yeah. Nelson's yep. right. Like, they are not on easy street, but they're, like, mid-table right now, to use a soccer yeah. term. Like, they're not in the relegation zone. So just, no. just, just cruise for a bit. The mm -hmm. one thing I have to say is that I think the the people in the house have to cut out this burn vote nonsense because they're going to fuck around and let Johnny Bananas walk to a final. <laughs> well, I mean, at some point the game will pick up and I'm sure we're going to get there, right? Where people start to figure out the game because there is a strategy. I just don't know what the strategy is yet. Do you know what I mean? Like there mm -hmm. is a strategy. And I guess the first step would be if everyone was just honest about who they're voting in to begin with, but I don't know if that even benefits anyone, right? So, well, and you don't need everyone to be honest. You just need two or three teams to vote the same way. Like, you just need a core rock solid alliance of two or three teams that vote in unison. But this is the thing, right? Like, I know CT and Veronica, like CT had the joke of team layup, right? Yeah. Does that team exist? Do you know what I mean? Like, who is it that, who would you be voting for right now, right? If you're whatever team, like who would you be voting for right now that A, you really want to get out of the house, but B, 
you're confident that you could beat in an elimination. And that, again, is like the key factor. And that changes depending on which team you are, right? Like a Tory and Derek team, you're probably not that confident, right? Yeah. So how many teams do you think you can beat? Whereas if you're Bananas and Tony, you're probably more confident, even though you shouldn't be because we've seen, right? They have these things to equal the equalizers, right? Is that what they were calling them? Yeah. So even if you are facing the 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 all male team versus an all female team it's not the advantage that you think it is Mm -hmm. so again i go back to the main point the strategy of this whole season i think and how you vote is totally different than before in the sense that before you're trying to vote out your alliance like who's not on your alliance you're trying to get those people out but in this instance i think it's way more important to just make sure that you avoid the elimination way more so than you try to get out someone who's not on your side of the house yeah um what was your line of the episode that was super easy right like there's no one else that i could give the line to other than amanda just because to the way that it was all going down and like it was set up by joss talking about how they're how uh you know they're just making out and He's like trying to be all suave and like kissing her on the neck. And then all of a sudden she just says, all right, show me your dick. <laughs> and then she's just like she she says that. And then she's like, yeah, sorry, I'm just straight up and straight to the point. And I just thought that was hilarious because. There's two sides. There's one side where we think that people do things just for the camera and it's like all fun and games and you're just trying to make television but that was one where she's like oh no 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 like i'm trying to get it in right now like let's <laughs> let's get to it yeah. right? and i thought that was hilarious i'll tell you what my line was uh when they when the train came around the corner when they like made its dramatic entrance for the uh challenge for the competition and faith said mm-hmm. bitch we go into hogwarts I love that. That popped me. <laughs> also, also, Renner up his carrot. Get off of his lap. Those were both yeah, classic. The, it was a solid episode, and Faith again. Faith's whole thing about her being the only real veteran in the house. Yeah, that was a solid, solid line. Like this was, this was one of the better episodes of the season. Is the show at the pace that it should be yet? No. No, but this was at least a step in the right direction. Yeah. Um, so I have to ask you, Sheldon, who killed it for you this week? It's the same person I just gave the MVP to. It's Amanda. Oh. And, yeah, I mean, sorry, not the same per. Well, my MVP and the person who had the line of the episodes are the same. And the reason being, I just think the best way, as I stated all episode, right? You're trying to avoid the elimination. Well, what's the best way to avoid the elimination? Win. Winning challenges. Right. So they did that. Um, This was a very difficult challenge. I think what I normally base my MVP on when I am giving out MVP awards, right, is person who fully encompasses the full challenge experience. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what that means is you're partying, you're having fun, you're hooking up and you're winning challenges. And yeah, Amanda's doing all of that. I mean, Zach isn't because his significant other isn't in the house, but Amanda's managed to get booed up in the house. So not mad at you. Keep doing your thing both on and off the challenge field. (laughs) Uh, For me, it's Marie, Uh, because as I alluded to earlier, although uh, Cara Maria and Marie are, they're embroiled in that drama. I think that, I mean, they even alluded to it on the episode. Marie performed in that competition. Uh, and, you know, she kicked back, it pushed back at all the haters. And I really think that, I mean, we'll have to see how it plays out. But Car Maria and Marie, this could have been like a bonding episode for them. This could have been where things really turn around for them. And like I said, just the look on her face, the w- the delivery of the line was just so on point. And as you said, I mean, Marie gave voice 
to millions of people watching this show. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And um, I. W- and it's just it was perfect. And so, like you, uh, you know, did well in competition. M- maybe set her team up for greater things. And I think it's really significant that they agreed on who to vote for. And, uh, you know, made some contributions off the field of competition as well. It was really cool to see them kind of bond in the sense of ganging up on Kyle Mm -hmm. and Brad at the end. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, she was right in there. Yeah. Um, I will say this, though, you know, as much as. As much as uh, Marie's done such a good job in what she was trying to do here, I think listeners to this podcast, maybe uh, viewers of MTV The Challenge, some of us might feel kind of bad for Marie because what she was trying to do in terms of saving Kara from herself, it reminded me of the wise words of noted poet Project Pat, Uh who once famously said, don't save her, she don't want to be saved. Mm. That's how I'm going to end this because I don't think Kara wants to be saved. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Very deep. I and right now, it. there's a bunch of millennials that listen to this podcast that are now googling Project Pat, "Don't Save Her," and they're going to be very surprised when they get to that song and actually listen to the song. <laughs> um, I already mentioned my second favorite reality TV show, Sixty Days In, which I do love. Okay. But I discovered a new show. That okay. it is in the Challenge universe, which is on MTV UK, but you can watch it on MTV.ca for our Canadian okay. listeners, called Just Tattoo of Us. Are you familiar with Just Tattoo of Us? No, I am not. My good friend Lily Pontieri recommended it to me, and okay. the concept is, I can't remember their names... Two of the cast members from the Geordie Jer- Shore are uh, hosts of the show. And the yeah. concept is pairs of people who are exes or they're in a relationship or they're longtime friends or they're siblings go together to get a tattoo together. But the way it works is they decide the design and location of the tattoo for their partner and the person as they get tattooed has to wear a blindfold which is they're actually goggles that have been spray painted and they call them fear goggles and who would agree to go on the show oh it's so good sheldon it's such trash but so good the best uh I've only seen the one episode, but they have, like, several reveals per episode. The okay. And, like, sometimes it's a nice thing. Like, sometimes people, like, will, like, have a tattoo of, like, a deceased and beloved pet or something like that. Like, it's not bad. But let me tell you, there's this one couple where uh, the one guy had cheated on the other guy. And, like, they were still... They were still together, but they were reeling from the cheating. Mm -hmm. And the tattoo that ended up being put on the cheater was so good. I'm not going to spoil it, but... Wow, okay, okay. It was so good. Interesting. And so I just, for people who are needing that fix, for more challenge-related content, because there's Geordie Shore people on it, Check it out. Just Tattoo of Us. <laughs> Solid name, by the way. Great name. Great name. Uh, where can the people find you on the Soch? Uh You can find me on Twitter at Shell Alexander and on Instagram at Sheldon Alexander, as well as YouTube for some YouTube content. Uh, and yeah, I'm sticking with Soch. I'm going to make it happen. Uh, and I wasn't going to acknowledge it at all. <laughs> <laughs> I, could, I could hear the judgment in your voice, Sheldon. And you can get me on Twitter and Instagram at J Chidley Hill. Until next week, this was You Killed It. Remember, kids, don't save her. She don't want to be saved. Don't save her. Don't save her.